Hey guys, it's just July and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this video is going to be a little bit of a longer one, but I wanted to take you guys through the entire process from design to finished garment. Now I already had the corduroy fabric that I used on hand, so I was really trying to figure out what I wanted to do with it. Then I decided a matching set would be super cute, so I made two designs, these two right here. I actually couldn't pick for a little while, but then I sent some to friends, had them vote, and based off of their feedback, I picked my favorite, which was this one. So then I just took this design and started making a pattern. Quick sidebar, this design did end up looking a little bit different by the time I was over, but overall I'm still super happy with the result. I actually like the deviations a little better than the original sketch, which is why it's a creative process, not a creative start and finish. Yeah. Or something inspirational, I don't know. I didn't know how in-depth I could go in terms of this video showing you guys the actual process that I go through for making a pattern, but I did make a general overview of the process that I'll show you guys right now. So because I had a drawing and I have a basic understanding of the way that clothes and patterns work, I broke down my drawing into a few simple pattern pieces that I'd need and then I just drew out those basic shapes. Next, I just measured myself and then figured out where I needed to input those measurements onto my pattern pieces to make it work. Then I just did some math and cut out my pattern pieces. So this was the basic top and skirt, plus some strips I hadn't cut out yet. Normally, most sane people, and also me, before going into final fabrics, which for me was this corduroy, will make a muslin. Now, muslin is a type of fabric, it's a super cheap cotton, but it's also a term used to describe that draft pattern. I just didn't have any cheap or sacrificial fabrics on hand that I could use to make that mock-up muslin. If this were like a pair of pants or something, I would definitely make a muslin first. I've learned. Aside from that, I felt confident enough to go straight into my final fabrics. I don't recommend doing that if you don't have to, but I did it and it worked out for the most part. So before I sew, I just lay out all my pattern pieces the way that they'll be assembled, take it onto my machine, and base the whole thing together. Then I did the same exact process on the top, and this is what it was looking like after everything was basted together and the waistband was pinned on. Then I just went ahead and top stitched all of those seams down on the skirt and got ready to attach the waistband. Once I had finished that waistband, I went ahead and top stitched the pockets and then I moved on. So I just added some bias tape to all of my edges, that side and waistband, just to finish everything off. And then once that was done, the skirt was basically finished. So right here, I'm doing that same process of sewing down the seams on the crop top piece, and then I'm preparing to embroider it. I also just wanted to come on here and add the fact that I have now obviously completed this entire project. It's been a couple of days. I've had time to recoup creatively, but if in any of these check-in sort of vlog videos, I sound like I am 99% done, I kind of am. When I make things, it's a super grueling process, kind of just do it, and then I get tired, and then I go to sleep, and then I wake up, and I start again, and I just do that constantly until a project is finished. So I promise I'm not angry, I'm just sleepy, and it's been a lot of sewing, so I'm a little bit over it. Fun fact, I filmed this clip, and then I realized that my camera was facing the other way. That's kind of how tired I am right now. But I finished the crop top piece, but now I'm going to embroider daisies on the entire thing because that was the design that I had. You guys, I'm watching this back and poor me, I need to go to sleep. And I thought it would look really cute, and I still think it's going to look really cute, but there's a lot of daisies. So I'm going to try and start that tonight and then finish that tomorrow and film some embroidering clips for you guys. And then we're basically done. Okay, so I'm calling it a night. I'm probably not gonna do the whole thing. I'm probably gonna leave the bag empty. Th these are cute though, I am happy with them. It's just, you know, good. <laughs> For the record though, it is really cute and I am excited and the daisies were worth it. It was just a lot at the time. <laughs> good morning. I could have gotten a little more sleep, but it's fine. I thought since I'm back to embroidering this bodice that I'd show you guys a little bit of the process. 
So this is a daisy that's half finished. This is a daisy that is finished. You can see that I did some chalk markings just so I knew where I wanted to put my daisies. Some people will draw two circles so that they know where the petal placement's gonna go. I just decided to freehand it so that it would be faster. And then I just let the embroidering begin. Okay, so the bodice is done. It has flowers. It took me breaking three sewing needles to think about maybe possibly, I don't know, using a thicker one. I didn't have that breakthrough until I was done with the top, but it's fine because there's a whole skirt and progress is being made. Speaking of skirts, here is mine. I actually opted to do tape instead of chalk this time and I liked it a lot better. Done with the embroidery on the skirt. I actually got a little faster. When I first started, it took me about seven minutes per flower and I got it down to like three to four minutes per flower, so that was nice. Next, I just hemmed that top, I hemmed the skirt, and then I tried it all on to assess the fit. So now that I've hemmed the skirt, I am trying this on. I used binder clips because the pins just, it's too thick and it wasn't working. So we're making it work. Obviously when the buttons are here, everything's gonna close up a little better, but for now, this is fine. So yeah, I'm, I'm in pajama pants again, but tiny setback because when I tried on the skirt, it's a little short, so I'm going to add some extra tape like this on the bottom and see how that works. Yeah, that's where I'm at right now. So I just made some more tape, flipped it over, and then stitched it underneath the skirt. And then once that was done, I just took the pockets and I attached them to the actual skirt. Once that was done, I felt it necessary to arrange the buttons like a flex capacitor and then sew on some buttonholes. I did the buttonholes on the top, then I marked out the space for the buttonholes on the skirt, sewed them through, and then I just went through them with a button and my finger to make sure that they were big enough after I'd seam ripped through the holes, of course. Then all that was left was to sew on the rest of the buttons, and we were finished. So that's it. We're done. I'm finished. I'm super excited at this point. I'm ready to get outside in the freezing cold. If you follow me on Instagram, you know what that's about. And take these after photos for you. So thank you guys so much for watching and enjoy the final result. Got it. somewhere up there make sure you follow me on instagram down here and yeah give this video a like if you did like it i love you guys so much and i will see you next week bye